In case you don't know, I've been building this website called Tutab.io, which is a search tool for programming learning resources. So the way this works is that people can submit links to programming tutorials, for example on YouTube, Udemy courses, books on Amazon, whatever, all kinds of programming learning resources together with some metadata. So for example, if the resource is paid or free, if it's video or text format, the difficulty level and so on. And then people can search for these learning resources and every resource has a vote count associated with it. So users can up and download it. And this way the best resources on any given topic should always race to the top of the list. So the idea is to uh, have a place where you can find the best programming learning resources. And I've just added a brand new comments feature to Tutab, which I'm really proud of. So every resource now has a comment section at the bottom. Users can write comments here. You can uh, reply to comments. And I added one level of nesting, like on YouTube. I think that's enough. And it's a nice place to uh, discuss learning resources. I think it's just a nice idea to have a central place where you can discuss different programming tutorials and courses. Maybe you want to make sure that you actually want to invest time into a certain resource or even money if it's a paid course. And of course, YouTube has a comment section and Udemy has a rating system and so on. But not every platform has a way to talk about a resource. For example, a book on Amazon. There is no real place to discuss a book on Amazon and if it's worth buying it. Also, I think you uh, can't ask questions on Udemy before you buy a course. So Tuta would be a nice place where you can ask a question about the course in the comment section. And someone else who bought the course already can answer it. So I think it's nice to have this one place for comments about different learning resources. And we will see if this turns out to be useful. And I've actually built this whole comments feature from scratch. So this is not something you plug in from a third party tool, like Discuss is one of them, for example. But I've coded all of this myself because it gives me more freedom. And also it doesn't have, have a lot of overhead. I don't have to bring other JavaScript libraries into my code, maybe third party cookies and stuff like that, which has data privacy implications. Instead, I do it myself and it's, it's super fast. For example, when we uh, click on reply, it's not like on YouTube where it takes a moment before the, the box opens. Instead, it opens immediately because it's my own code. It's very efficient. It doesn't bring other JavaScript that we don't need and so on. Sending a reply is also fast. We can delete replies. And it has been a lot of fun building this from scratch. I like building stuff like this. Of course, you shouldn't always reinvent the wheel, but sometimes it just makes sense. So here we can see my server endpoint where we uh, create a new comment. We have some validation here. I've also uh, set up an email notification feature. So if your resource that you posted gets a new comment, you will get an email. And if someone replies to your comment, you get an email as well. And of course, I will also uh, very soon add a way to opt out from these emails. I haven't added it yet because there aren't many uh, comments yet, but it's of course important. You uh, don't want to uh, always get a notification. So there will be a way to uh, disable notifications. So I would be really happy if you try out this new comments feature. Maybe you find a bug in there. Um, since I've coded it myself, it's always difficult to get it 100% right immediately. I would be happy if you try it out. Just run a search on Tutab. Check a resource that you uh, might be interested in or that you have maybe already watched or purchased in the past. And then just leave a helpful comment there. It would make me really happy. And for the rest of the video, I want to show you some other updates I've done to the website. Some of them are really interesting, so let's take a look at them. One very cool new feature I've added is a filter for the year of the resource. So every resource has a year associated with it, where it was either released or last updated. And now you can actually filter by this year. So we have this drop down menu here. And this only shows years that actually uh, appear in the search results. So as you can see, we don't have 2016, for example, because there is no resource with the year 2016. So this will not even show up here. And I can tell you setting up this, especially with the counts, was quite tricky. It was not so easy, but it's doable. And as a reminder, I'm using MongoDB on the backend. So this is where I had to set up all of this. So for example, we can say we don't want to see resources that are older than 2019, for example. 
which are 149 results. Some resources don't have a year associated with them. This is why this extra box here appears, which says exclude unknown years. So this will remove resources like this one here where there is no year set to it. Sometimes we don't know it. As you can see, I've also done some other improvements to the layout of the resources. Most importantly, I've added a preview of the tags or the topics of the resource, which I think can make it easier to uh, see what this resource is actually about, because sometimes it's not really contained in the title. Sometimes the title doesn't really make clear what this is about. So I want to show some of the topics. I can't show all of them because sometimes those are a lot. Sometimes those are like three lines of topics and I don't want to show all of them in the resource entry here, but I show the first three. I think this is quite useful. Next, I've done a very important overhaul to uh, how the search results are ordered. So they have always been ordered by uh, a search score that they get depending on how well they fit the search query. I switched over to localhost because here in uh, development mode I show some data that I don't show in production and this value here is the search score. And the higher the search score is, the higher the result will appear in the search results. In the past, the search score was defined by how often a word appeared in the title, in the text and in the description with different weights. But the problem is that you could easily game this search score by just adding a word more often. So if it appeared twice in the topics in different variations, then it would have a higher search score, which really skewed with the search results. So it wasn't optimal. That's why I have changed this and I think now it's almost perfect. The main difference is that now each search term is only count once for the search score. So if we search for Jetpack Compose, for example, then it doesn't matter if it appears twice or three times in the metadata, it's only count once. But it's count with a, with a different weight depending if it appears in the title or just in the topics. So um, let's take a look at this. I've searched for Jetpack Compose. All resources that have Jetpack Compose as exact matches in the title will have the highest rank in the search score. Because when it appears in the title, I assume that it's very relevant to the search query. Even more relevant than when it appears only in the topics. So as you can see, all these resources that have Jetpack Compose in the title have a search score of 4.4. Then I also take the votes into account. This is the value here in the back that you can see. So I add this tiny amount to the search score for the number of upvotes. And this moves these results higher in the list. So now we have all resources with Jetpack Compose in the title ordered by uh, votes. So 4.422, 4.45 and so on. And eventually we will get to a point where we don't have Jetpack Compose in the title anymore. But maybe we just have one word in the title, maybe just Jetpack, maybe it just appears in the topics. Let's see. We are still at 4.4. So those are still resources with Jetpack Compose in the title. But here we get to 4.2. Why? Because now only Compose is in the title. The word Jetpack is missing. It's a less fitting result for the search query. This one here is 4.2 as well. But again, this one is voted higher. So it's ranking higher in the list. I think this is exactly how the search results should be shown. If we go further down the list, we will eventually um, reach a point where we have an even lower search score. Those are examples here. So these results don't have Jetpack Compose in the title anymore but still in the topic text, as you can see here. This is why they still rank relatively higher, but I assume that if it doesn't appear in the title, it's slightly less relevant than the resources where it appears in the title. Let's take a look at the end of the list. Yeah, we still have resources where Jetpack Compose is in the text. Here, for example, Jetpack Compose, and here we only have 2.2. Why? Because now the word Jetpack is missing. And as you can see, it actually makes sense because this is not a Jetpack Compose resource. It's Docker Compose. The word Compose is still in the title, so it still fits the search query, but the word Jetpack is missing, so the search score is much lower. If we now had a resource where there's only the word Compose in the topics, but not in the title, then the search score would be a 2.0. I think this is just a much better way to order these search results and it should help find much more relevant resources for your query. Then there's also one other interesting change I've made. The idea from the very beginning was that you should be able to find granular tutorials on Tutab as well. 
So if we search for Jetpack Compose, we will not only find beginner tutorials, we also find resources like this one here. How to make a QR code scanner in Jetpack Compose. Now the problem was it made it more difficult to find actual beginner courses. Because if you type in Jetpack Compose, you also find these ones here at the top. So I wanted to uh, make sure that people can still find beginner courses on Tudab as well. The problem is not all beginner courses have the word beginner in the title. So for example, you can see here, Jetpack Compose Crash Course for Android with Kotlin. This is a beginner course, but it doesn't have the word beginner in the title. So how can I make sure that you can still find these beginner courses? So what I did is I looked through YouTube and Udemy and so on and I noticed that even though beginner courses don't always have the word beginner in the title, they have a lot of similar terms in the title. And those are the ones I found so far. So this is a file where I've set up some synonyms, which means that when you type in one of these terms, it will also search for the other ones. At the moment, I also added plurals here. Maybe in the future, I can make this more dynamic. Anyway, here you can see the synonyms for the word beginner. I added some typos as well that I saw commonly, like a beginner and so on. But beginner courses also often have the word fundamentals in the title, or for starters, or introduction, basics, complete course, for example. Bootcamp is another word that a beginner course often has in the title, or full course or crash course, getting started. Those are the ones I found so far. So as you can see, this one here has the word crash course in the title. So if we search for Jetpack Compose Beginner, this will actually show at the top because my code replaces the word beginner for its synonyms and crash course is one of the synonyms. Bootcamp is another synonym. Full course is another synonym. So as you can see, all these resources that are actually beginner courses but don't have the word beginner in the title now show up at the top. And this was really important to me and I'm very happy how this turned out. One other feature I've implemented are the comma points, which were planned from the beginning. This is a gamification system I want to build in the future. At the moment, there's only a leaderboard where you can see the highest comma for the current month and for all time. One idea I have is to create raffles in the future, monthly raffles, where you can, for example, win a Udemy a coupon code or something like that if you, for example, gain a certain amount of comma points per month. It's not implemented yet, it's just an idea. Right now you get comma points by posting a resource, which gives you 50 comma points, and when someone uploads your resource, then you get one comma point. I also made it so that you can't upvote your own resources anymore to game the comma points. So this is a resource I posted myself. When I try to upvote it, it shows an error toast here. In the future, I want to add comma points for more actions, for example, for updating a resource. I want to encourage this, so if someone thinks they have a better description or the link has changed meanwhile, then I want to encourage them to update a resource. And I think using the comma point system for this is a nice idea. Oh, and by the way, I also made it so that you don't get negative comma points when someone downwards your resource. You only get positive comma points for upwards because I don't want to encourage people from posting on the website. If a resource is bad, then the ranking system will move it to the bottom of the results, but I don't want to punish people for posting a resource that others don't like, so you only get positive comma points. I've also added a list of your last visited resources to uh, your profile page on Tutab. I think this can be very useful if you uh, opened a resource earlier, but you don't remember the title. So you can find it again here. Of course, you still have your bookmarks, your posted resources and so on. And also long overdue, I've added a Google login button now. So in the past, you could only log in to the website or sign up using email and password. But now we have this additional Google login button here, which just works as usual. You click it, log in your Google account, and then you are logged into your Tutab account. And if you already have a Tutab account set up with email, then you can also connect your Google account in hindsight. Just go to your profile page, log in, and then there will be a, a connect to your Google account button. Very straightforward. And of course, GitHub login is planned as well. I will implement this soon. For now, it's just Google or email and password. I think it's also interesting to note that I stopped writing unit tests or any tests for that matter now. Of course, tests are important, but I think if you are building a startup like this, then it's more important to add new features fast and the rest of the time goes into marketing and writing blog posts and stuff like that, which I also want to talk about more a bit later. But the thing is, writing tests takes time. 
and it's not worth investing this time right now. Instead, I'm just really careful when I change code and I test some stuff manually before I deploy the changes. But I think writing this huge set of unit tests just doesn't make sense at the moment. I think a better time to do this is later, maybe when the project is bigger so that it's really difficult to change anything. But also I think it's more important to have solid tests in place when you work with multiple people on a project. Because then not everyone knows what a certain piece of code is for or what they have to pay attention to. Since I work on this project alone at the moment I know all the little details and the ins and outs and I know which pieces of code are very important. If you have other people work on the code then it's more important to have tests in place that make sure that they don't break anything. But for me right now it's not a priority. Okay, I will keep you updated in the future about Tutab, about other changes. You can also let me know if you want to see more of the code and not just the features. I have some interesting topics to talk about like database transactions and stuff like that. And yeah, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and I hope I see you in the next video. Take care.